Greetings, friends, and welcome to another exciting and completely random prop build. What are we building today? Uh, this is what we're building today. We're going to be working on bottles. Now, first step of this is you're going to need some sort of beverage, either root beer, beer, whatever the heck you want, but you're going to need bottles that you can pull the labels off of. These ones are vinyl, and they come off actually pretty easy, so you're going to want to do this and pull the labels off at least six bottles because well, my prop is built around oh, six bottles. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, quite, the, quite the noise. And here we go. You can see that the next step we're going to be doing is we want to prep the bottles to get them into a fashion that looks old. This here is done with sandpaper. And I just went to town with like a very rough garnet sandpaper to see how it would look to bring the age of the bottle away from the perfect shiny. You can do this, but this was hard work. What I ended up doing is coming up with a system where I got rid of the glossiness of the bottle somewhat. You can see there, and this is wild how it works. I use hairspray and I sprayed the bottle to get just the water-based hairspray to get a coating on here. And then, once that had dried, I used my Verithane, which is your diamond wood finish, and I painted over the whole bottle again. And what it does is, for some reason, it reacts with each other, and you end up with like this dotted pattern that pulls it all together, and it looks really good. And you can see up here specifically how it removes a lot of the shine, because if you don't do that, your bottle is something like this, and it looks brand new. And when you put those two beside each other, you can see on just how much of that original shine that little tiny process takes away. Even down here, you can see just how strong that shine is versus that shine. It's really a quick, quick little system to get the bottles to where you need it. Just if you're going to have it, avoid doing anywhere near the top so people don't end up putting their mouth on to this kind of stuff. Now, once you've got all of your bottles done and finished, you're going to be using uh, Super 76 glue. One second here. I try to grab everything that I need to record this. And I'm such a punk because I won't go cut all this. I use Super 77 glue and it's just a spray glue. And we're going to be putting on labels. Now, the labels are on a template file. Everything, as always, if you've watched my videos before, template down below. I offer all this stuff for free, so you can do this. You're going to go and you're going to find a large selection of different labels. There's going to be two different styles. I'll have to show you the second style after because it's not actually here. What we need to do is we need to prep these labels. Now, this, what we're doing here, will not play well with by putting it in ice water. These labels are paper. You're going to run into problems. If you want to do it where you're gonna be putting these things in ice, what I suggest you do is use just packing tape and cover and then overshoot. So when you put it on the bottle, the packing tape protects the label. But for what we are doing, I use my Verithane that I showed you before. And we just pretty much take a little bit on a brush and strangely enough, we paint it on, put on a decent layer. And what will happen is as it dries, it creates a beautiful, like shiny finish on this and protects the labels. So they're not going to end up getting wrecked. You have to do this step first, not second, because if you do it second, the labels like to peel on the bottles, which I found out through, you know, testing. Now, once you've got your labels all done, you can see here, that is the finish on them. You can see that beautiful, shiny finish. And you're just going to cut them out. Now, if you've got bottles that have got square labels, you can leave the brown around it so when you put it on, it covers up the label fully. If you can't get them off, like certain beer bottles, I'm sure, unless you soak them, you're not going to be able to get the labels off. So this is all down below on the actual thing and, yeah, on the actual template, so you'll be able to see what exactly they look like. Then using the glue, you're going to spray it and just stick it onto the bottle. Oh, look, there's the second label. Ha ha, I did have it, but see, this is on the shiny bottle. Lots of experimentation. Anyways, you see here, that's how 
it looks when it's stuck on. It looks really cool. That's my second design. And you're just going to go through and build six of these. Now, you're probably noticing at the top that I've got these on. This is extra. I didn't like how the bottle looked with the, the you know, the label on. Let's see if I have one with the label on and the top. No, I don't. I didn't like it how it looked with, you know, you'd finish it up and you'd have those sitting at the top. So what I did is going on to my ever so friendly Amazon, I found these wine bottle shrink wrap tops. And all you're going to do is once your label is on, you're going to take that, stick that on there and using a heat gun, you shrink this into place and it is pretty darn slick on how it looks. As you can see here, it looks so neat and really brings up the authenticity of the bottle. So when you look at it, it doesn't look like a newer bottle. And when you go to drink, you just pull off this top part here and you get access to tear this whole thing off. They come at this really big long length. I suggest you knock about an inch and a quarter off before you put them on and shrink wrap them. And that is the bottles. Like it's a lot of work on my behalf because I had to design all these labels, come up with an entire business that is non-existent anywhere to make it so these things look believable, but you know, you're not ever stepping on any toes. So it became the Hosmer Brewing Company, uh, tied back to my childhood. Anyways, we are now going to move on to doing the box or the, not the box, the carrying, uh, caddy for this. And it's all some woodwork. See you then. Now on to part two. Obviously down below, template. This is going to be the first half of the carrying case. And what you're going to do is you're just going to get some one by six fence board. It doesn't have to be anything amazing. And you're going to trace A onto B. Now up here, you're going to have this cross. Just take a pencil and poke the very center of it. That will allow you to take a three quarter inch drill bit and drill that hole. Now what I suggest is when you drill this hole, Drill about halfway through until that point there comes through the other side, flip it over and finish it. That way it doesn't blow out. And we're going to see both sides of this, so we don't want it to get wrecked. So once you've drawn this, you're either using a jigsaw or bandsaw, just take out these pieces. You don't have to do this part. Heck, you don't have to do this part. You can skip it if you want altogether, but I like the way it looks because it kind of is neat. So once you've got those done, I just took a sander and I knocked down these edges to make them look a little bit worn and not make them as strong and tight as they were, or not tight, sharp. Next thing you're gonna need is, this is a 7.5 inch piece. And of course I'll put it in the template just so you have it. And this is going to be the bottom. And yeah, nothing, what more can I say? It's a rectangular piece of wood. The last part we're gonna need is we're gonna need some slats for the side. We need four of them. Now these are, I will have them listed at quarter of an inch, but in reality, this is just leftover trimmings from previous jobs. Don't go out of your way to get exact width. You just want something that's somewhat strong to hold it all together because they are going to go there when we're all done. So now using just wood glue and a nailer, you can use hand nails or this type of nail if you want. I'm going to go assemble this. So when we get it all together, I'll show you what it looks like all finished. Oh. Before I forget, this is a three quarter inch wooden dowel that's going to be the handle. And that's going to be nine inches as well, which I'll put in when I'm done. Anyway, it's going to get it assembled. I'll show you what it looks like and we'll talk about the extra finishing on it. See you all few. right, it's a new day and uh, my stain is all dry. And I'm just going to quickly go over what I did to get to this point. If you watch lots of my videos, you see I've seen this exact process before because I've done it before. The only thing different is on here where I put the staples in because they weren't exactly, you know, traditional looking. I used a couple of furniture nails and it really gives it a look and feel of, of age and it really is nice. Then using my provincial pine, or is it provincial? No, this is a Puritan pine. I think they changed the name of that stuff. Anyways, I used the Puritan pine as a base and then used my provincial gel stain to age it up. And all you do is pretty much just put a little bit on with a very dead paintbrush and then you wipe it off the, the excess to get a l gently. And what ends up happening is it ends up accentuating areas. You can see here, there's the original and there's the stuff that I added. It really is nice on like the end grains. It really changes it up. Now you'll also see one other thing here. 
are these printed elements. Now, and same with this one. These are, of course, on the template as always. I'll flag them as caddy uh, items because even though this label is the same size as the beer bottle label, this one is actually a logo, which makes more sense for a caddy. Anyways, when you're doing this, I just use the wood glue, which is hiding right there. And I put it on and I make sure I get really good coverage and stick it on. And I want to do this before I go verithane this thing because then it'll protect the label itself. This one here, you just want to cut it out to shape. This one's hard when you glue it because it's so like so tiny. You've got to be very gentle when you put this one on and you're pushing the glue out to get it completely down flat. It, yeah, wood glue is probably not the best option here, but I like how well it makes these things stick down. So after that, all you do is just do the two logos on each side. And then I'm going to go using some uh, uh, Varathane, which is um, what is an acrylic an acrylic sealer. Anyways, Varathane. Go look it up. I'll put it actually in the link down below, what I use. I'm going to go get this thing varathane up, put a couple coats on it, and use some seal wool between the stages to get it all ready to go. And then I'll be back to show you the whole thing together. See you in a bit. And we're all finished. This thing turned out pretty darn cool. I love the way this thing looks. And it's such an interesting practical prop, all said and done, because it's just fun. And you once you've, you know, if you've drank the actual fluids in your said bottles, you can always reseal it with another one of these and be done. And you always have a, like a perpetual prop. It just is such a neat look and feel. And it's fun if you ever do it for like a party or something. This would be a total hit because it looks authentic as heck. Oh, just one quick note. When you do the Varathane, do multiple coats on it. I don't think I said that at the beginning of the video. But regardless, thank you so much for hanging around, everybody. You are a bunch of awesome people. Uh, I appreciate the time you spend with me and coming along with me on these really crazy designs and fun things that I really do enjoy doing. Um, a big thank you to my patrons who send me money each month to go buy root beer so I can go and make these stupid things. And <laughs> to all my subscribers and watchers and everybody who, you know, looks at my stuff on Instagram, all that, you're so appreciated. And uh, I don't know what I've got coming up next week, but we will see. And regardless, thanks for hanging out, everybody, and have a good one all.